Okay, thanks for uh, joining. I'm going to go over the sample serve sampling and reporting platform application. Um, so the the value proposition of the sample serve platform is that it serves multiple parties. It's not just for one party in the sample location. Uh, it serves the consulting engineering company through a simplified workflow. You'll see through our project management tool and the way that work flows that it's very simple workflow process. Um, it actually reduces cost because it saves time, uh, which allows you to be more competitive on your pricing. Um, and so with reduced costs and more competitive pricing, uh, you could potentially improve your margins um, or increase your bottom line. You know, uh, if you're saving costs, you can keep all the savings to yourself or share them with your client. Um, and then all those, you know, lower costs, better uh, pricing, improved margins, all lead to sales growth for your company, for the consulting engineering company. For your end clients, for the uh, the clients actually using the platform or own the properties, uh, what they benefit from is real-time information. They get to see things right as they're being collected. Uh, as soon as lab data is uploaded there, it's available for them to review and plot and map and sort and graph, whatever they need to do. Um, and then the historical data can be uploaded. Uh, there's no charge to upload, upload historical data. So you can put in all your historical data at no cost. Uh, reports are delivered very quickly. It's very simple to get a report out the door using our platform and uh, same day report delivery, uh, same day the lab data is done is uh, very simple and easily accomplished. And then again, lowered cost for your end client potentially, which all leads to site closures, which is what the uh, the client is really ultimately interested in. And so on a typical corner gas station, this is all using US dollars here, typical corner gas station will say 10 monitoring wells being sampled, or maybe you're sampling some other type of, of uh, you know, media, soil, or maybe a wastewater or drinking water or, or surface water. But uh, this is a, for a cost comparison savings on a corner gas station. If you say uh, 10 wells are being sampled, um, we can save roughly 50% up to 60, 70% of the cost. And those savings are um, accomplished through uh, every touch point on the sample uh, data chain, uh, the project management, lab interface, field data collection. There's about a 20% savings in uh, time and uh, expense of the field person. And then getting that report out the door, generating those graphics, that's really where the biggest saving is, savings are at. So here's a, a schematic of the data flow, the different, there's four main components to our platform. The first part is the project management tool. And the project management tool is where you're going to upload all your project information. You're going to upload all your historical lab data, your historical field data. Uh, you're going to actually communicate with the laboratory. You're going to connect with the laboratory through the platform here. And you're going to order bottles directly from them and pick from their menu of analytical parameters through the project management tool. You then can generate a scope of work, you know, what you're going to sample, where you're going to sample, what you're going to test for. Uh, you're going to generate that scope of work, and when you hit the save button, that scope of work gets pushed to the mobile platform, uh, the mobile app, and the mobile app is designed to collect the data, um, take the pictures, you know, record the data, GPS locations. It's going to print your labels in the field right at the time of sampling, um, and then when you've gotten all your samples, you're ready to ship samples to the laboratory, you're going to generate the digital chain of custody with the mobile application. And that's going to push to the mobile lab app. I want to point out that the lab does not have to use our lab app. There are mechanisms to turn the digital chain of custody into a paper chain of custody. You can do that. When we ship the digital chain of custody, it goes as a digital a data file and also a PDF. So you're able to turn that uh, chain of custody into paper if needed. You just throw that in the cooler. Uh, but if the lab does participate, they're going to be able to use our lab app receive that information, scan those samples, and go through a checklist, a lab checklist, very easily and quickly. And then when they're done with the analysis, they've received the data, the samples, completed the analysis, they're able to upload the data back to the platform very simply and easily. And then the user, the consulting engineering company, is able to generate all the common graphics, all the data box maps, groundwater contours, ice chemical contours, graphs, tables, you name it. They can generate all those graphics literally in a matter of minutes. So here's a second um, schematic of the data flow through the platform. Uh, the project management tool pushes the scope of work to the mobile field app. You collect the data, pushes to the lab app. 
labs then run the analysis and then push the data back and then you can generate all the common graphics all connected to the sample serve database a central sample serve database but we can also connect to all these other platforms equus esri infos uh, esdat uh, we can connect in a numerous ways either manually through just manual file uploads and downloads or we can develop apis and push and pull data from either one of the, any one of these platforms automatically obviously the apis are going to require their cooperation but um our record for taking an equus file and pushing it into our platform is 33 projects in one day so uh, it's actually just simple drag and drop um and uh, we've created lots of ways to communicate with other platforms so the project management tool, and that's where you're gonna set up your projects and everything, it's very simple to use, uh, lots of uh, very simple intuitive instruction. Uh, you can schedule things years in advance. Um, it allows you to communicate both with the laboratory and with your field technicians very simply and easily. Um, it automates your sample bottles, sample bottle orders. So when you set up a scope of work on what you're gonna test for, it knows where you're testing, uh, how many bottles the lab requires, what type, size, preservative, all that. Uh, and then it places that bottle order for you so that your orders are placed automatically two weeks ahead of time. Um, and it's a very detailed scope of work. So when your field person goes out into the field, they know uh, all the different things that they're supposed to uh, collect and record. Um, and then you can actually convert any part of this digital process into a paper. There's actually a paper form that you can use. Just hit this uh, pre-sampling form button there and you can actually convert the different parts of the digital platform to paper as a backup if you're not comfortable going full digital at right from the get-go um, so that we can give you that warm fuzzy feeling of having paper backup if needed so here's a quick video of our project management tool uh, it's very intuitive simple to use mostly point and click you just pick the date you want to sample you're then going to actually connect directly to the laboratory's menu of sample uh, parameters and tests that they offer. Um, they're going to actually detail which bottles and types and preservatives. Um, then you pick which ones you want. Uh, you can pick your, your, it does all your blind duplicates, your MS to MSDs, the other quality control samples. Uh, and it's intuitive and intelligent in that it is not going to let you do a blind duplicate on a sample or a parameter that you haven't identified as collecting in the first place. So uh, all you do then is hit the save button and then that scope of work gets pushed to the mobile field app. Now the mobile field app is designed to work in the cloud and design uh, all the data goes through the cloud and it's designed to work offline. So you're not going to be um, out in the field, not um, you know having to worry about pushing and pulling your data. All the data can be stored on the device and then all you have to do is connect back to the cloud and it will sync your information automatically. Um, and so everything is stored on the device, just reconnect to the cloud, and then everything gets pushed automatically. Um, and so here's uh, our mobile field app. If you've got more than one person out in the field, let's say you've got two, three field technicians all working on the same project, and they periodically connect to the cloud, or maybe they're connected full time, either through a connected device or a, um, a hotspot on their phone, they're gonna be able to see what the other person has done and be able to just kind of track. Um, our labels are printed right in the field, right at the time of sampling. You can see the labels are unique. They've got a barcode and a QR code and uh, signatures. So you sign your name on the device and it actually gets printed on the label. Um, and if you've got five bottles or five labels you need to print, it'll that one signature will print five times on the, all the bottles that are appropriate. Um, and then there's a GPS function as well, right on the home screen. So you just pick your sample. It'll literally tell you where your location is, show you where you're at, and you'll be able to walk yourself right to the, the sample location very easily. There's also pictures, um, you know, identifying the sample locations if you've uploaded those. And then we also sort the samples from clean to dirty. So we look back at the historical data. We look at the last time it was sampled. And then we sort the, the sample locations. We total up all the contaminants that were reported. And then we sort the contaminants from clean to dirty. So... Now you can resort alphanumerically, uh, but then you can sort from clean to dirty as well. So it's a good quality control measure to, to you know, start with the clean samples and sample the dirtiest ones last. And then the project manager can actually sit in the office and actually track what's going on in real time. So once they've completed a sample, 
and they've connected to the cloud, the project manager can actually see that, that the information from that sample and the pictures and, and kind of track your progress. And then we also have the ability to create custom forms. So let's say while you're out there, you want to do a well inspection, well condition inspection, a report or a form you want filled out. You can create that form in the platform through the project management tool and then push that to the mobile field app. So it'll be tied to that sample location. And so they'll know it'll key up that they need to complete that form for that sample location. And that form can be anything that uh, you want to create. It could be a you know, PDB pla placement form or a um, uh, well development form or just a simple well inspection form. And so here's a quick video of our field app in action. Uh, it's a point and click. Um, unless you've done it before, uh, gloves, gloved hands don't work for a while on a touch screen. So we recommend using a stylist. Uh, you can see that uh, our labels are unique and that they've got three parts to it. As I mentioned earlier, there's the main part has the all the information that's typical to a bottle label, your signature, who you are, all that stuff is printed on there. Um, and then we have two separate QR codes. Now, one of those QR codes is designed to go on the lid of the bottle. And the second QR code can be left at the sample location. It's optional. You don't have to do it. But that second QR code can be left at the sample location. And, and then uh, for reference, you can actually scan that QR code and actually pull up the sample results after the lab data has been posted. Now, um, it's particularly good for like asbestos sampling or maybe you've sampled a drum and you want to be able to pull up the results of what's in that drum just from that sample location. So you just leave that second QR code there and you can uh, access that data. Now, uh, we ship the field data, right? As soon as you're done sampling, you can ship. It doesn't do it automatically, but if you want to share your field data as soon as you're done sampling, you got to be connected to the cloud. Uh, but it'll ship as both a CSV file and a PDF. So here's an example of our low flow sampling a field data form. Um, it'll show the last three pictures that you took, all your low flow data. It tells you when things are stable. You can put notes on there. You can see it says missing two bolts. Um, and then all the other information, your calibration information, what bottles you filled up. So all that gets shipped right as soon as you're done sampling. You can share that with your project manager or or client or whoever's interested. The um, as I mentioned, there's a built-in low flow calculator in the app. We use the US EPA methodology. Um, it'll tell you when things are stabilized. Uh, you can share the information as I just showed you right from the device as soon as you're done sampling, provided you're uh, connected. Um, it does store all the data on the device offline, so you don't have to worry about losing data. Um, and all you gotta do is connect and it will and have the app open and logged in and it will automatically sync back to the cloud. Um, and then when your samples are collected, you'll see there's a little, um, it turns green, a little green button. And so you can tell when you're done with a particular location and the entire work scope. And then if you need to, you can actually add uh, unscheduled, unscheduled samples on the fly. So maybe you're showing up to a tanker truck rollover. You haven't planned any sampling or, um, you know, there's a big snow pile on top of a monitoring well and you can't access it. So you're going to switch to another well. Uh, so you're able to do that stuff using the device on the fly um, automatically, not automatically, but manual. So here's a quick video of our digital chain of custody and how this works. We First, we know who you are and who's collected the sample or transferred custody through a three-part authentication. The first part is your username and password. And as I mentioned, you're actually going to sign your name on the device. And then you're going to take a selfie with every sample collected and every transfer of custody. We also collect a date and time stamp and a GPS location. So those five points of information, we know with certainty the who, the where, and the when of every sample collected and every transfer of custody. There's no question about where a sample started from and how it got to the laboratory. It's very clear and very precise. And so you'll see here there's there's a what our chain of custody looks like. It gets sent as an electronic file and as a PDF. And you can see it pretty much looks like every other chain of custody you've ever seen. The main part, we've got all the sample collection information, uh, bottles, number of bottles of time collected, all that stuff. And then all the client project um, invoicing information, turnaround time. That's all just like a typical chain of custody. But then we also have down here, you'll see the chain part is a little bit different. You can see here, these, 
A guy named uh, Jake Cato collected all these samples here. Jake then gave those samples to me, Russell Schindler, and then I took the samples to the lab. So these samples here followed this transfer of custody. And then down here, these are the samples that I collected. And then I took my samples directly to the lab. And again, if you'll notice, there's a date and time stamp and a GPS coordinate uh, below each transfer of custody. We also capture it for each sample as well. So you've collected your samples. You've, you've done the chain of custody. Now the samples go to the laboratory. We've got a separate lab app that the labs can use. We give away to the labs for free. Um, the labs love it because they can see what's been scheduled. They see when samples are in progress. And then they see when the samples are in transit through the lab app. They can see that stuff automatically. Um, the digital chain of custody actually has no paper whatsoever. It's all done digitally. And we print a custody seal uh, from the printer. And that digital chain of custody, custody seal, acts as our chain of custody. And I'll show you a video on that. Then we also have a, a separate built-in lab login checklist. So the lab can customize their own checklist per type of media and per um, sand, their laboratory location. Um, so they can customize their own checklist and then fill out those checklists on the device. And uh, that becomes part of the record. And we can integrate with any lab limb system out there, laboratory information management system. So their software system, we can integrate with any system out there. And there's three levels of integration. We can do those different integrations with either a JSON file upload or a, a directly connected API. So, um, so any lab can use us. So here's a video of our digital chain of custody, or I'm sorry, the lab login app. You simply scan that custody seal that gets printed off the printer. And then once you scan that custody seal, it opens up the chain of custody. They're going to receive the chain just like um, that use the same three-part authentication I previously described. So you'll see they've accepted that chain. They're then going to go through that chain, that custody checklist. Is their ice is the proper temperature? They can then scan the, the QR codes on the lids of the bottles. We already know the inventory that's associated with that chain of custody. All they do is confirm that the bottles have arrived intact using the scan process. They can also do it manually by checking boxes. There's always a, the ability to check for exceptions if a bottle broke or if a bottle is missing as well. Um, then as soon as that's all done, they can share both that chain of custody and checklist with their clients or anybody else who's interested. They can share that information. Uh, instantly through the device, again, through a PDF and a JSON file upload. Now, once the lab is done with the analysis and they've um, sent the data back to our platform, there's a, it's easily uploaded back to our platform. There's about 20 different formats that we can accept and we can make a 21st if needed. Um, they upload it back to the platform and then generating the reports is actually very simple. Point and click generation. We can do soil, groundwater, air, other types of media, um, and we can compare the, the, the results of the lab to various cleanup criteria, uh, different territories, states, countries. Uh, you can even upload site-specific cleanup criteria. We've got a lot of data entered. Um, most of the states and you know, Australia, South Africa, Canada, all those countries we've already entered in, most of the you know, generic or um, territorial cleanup criteria for most of the chemicals, but you could even develop your own site-specific criteria for your particular project. That can be uploaded and you can compare the lab results to those criteria. You get to pick the criteria you want to compare to. Um, and then once you've got your project set up there, you can save your preferences on how you want to report your data. So the first time you report it, you're going to have to go in and, and uh, save your preferences, how many dates you want, you know, what chemicals you're looking for, which locations. You save all those preferences. The next time you come in, you're going to be able to generate those reports even faster than you did before. So uh, I routinely demonstrate that I can generate a full suite of graphics in under five minutes because I've saved all the preferences and I just hit print, 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 and it prints all the graphics. Um, so reports can be generated in a matter of minutes. Um, retraining on this reporting process if you're an experienced or even moderately experienced uh, environmental professional, we can train you how to do all these graphics in, in under two hours. So here's a quick video of the different graphics we can generate. Uh, we can do isochemical contours on a cross section, uh, groundwater contour maps, isochemical contour maps on a flat map, 
uh, all kinds of tables compared to three different criteria at the same time, up to three, all kinds of graphs, data box maps comparing to different criteria, and as I mentioned, ice chemical contours on a cross section. So, um, so there's lots of variations on these graphics as well. And so here's a quick list of all the different graphics that we could do routinely. Um, if you need something else, we can add that to the list as well. So customizable, uh, both data input, output, reporting, that kind of stuff. If you've got something unique, you need, chances are we can create it. I know we can report it. If we have the data, we can create a custom output report format. Um, so, uh, you know, just let us know. We can create the custom uh, reports. And a lot of people uh, want to know what we charge here in the United States. Now, this is not, um, if you're going through a, a third-party supplier, the pricing may be different. But for us here in the United States, we charge $15 per sample. And this is for groundwater, surface water, soil, uh, mostly, um, you know, land-based releases. Um, we have other pricing for other types of media like wastewater, drinking water. Uh, we don't care how many parameters you collect. You can collect one parameter. We can collect a thousand parameters is the same price. Um, we let you upload all your historical data for free. So if you're you're on a project you've been working on for 20 years, feel free to upload 20 years worth of data at the end of the platform. You can do all the reporting you want on that historical data. There's no cost. We only charge for samples into the platform going forward. So um, it's $15 per sample going forward. We do volume discounts. So if you've got a lot of sampling going on, Happy to uh, quote you lower prices on the volume discounts. And then um, we don't care how many users you have. You can have a, you know, one user, a hundred user, a thousand users. We encourage more users because we want people to use the platform. So no user fees. There are no other fees, in fact. Uh, we don't charge a startup fee. There's no monthly fee. There's no annual fee. It's just $15 per sample or whatever we quote you based on your volume. And then when you get an invoice from us, we're going to send you a, a project by project billing. So you'll be able to see, you know, project one had, you know, 15 samples, project two had 12 samples. Um, and then we're going to list each sample and the dates they were collected on. So that allows you to in turn bill your customer with direct costs directly associated with that project. It's not an overarching licensing fee that you would have a hard time dividing up amongst your, your clients. So uh, we our invoicing is such that you can bill, pass on our costs directly to your customers. Now, this is also this platform is also good for other types of sampling media due diligence you know phase two reports when you got to get that report done quickly there's a good way to get that report done quickly you can you know as soon as your lab data is in you can have the report done uh, soil sampling remediation system sampling um, other types of wastewater sampling soil vapor sampling surface water and wastewater as i mentioned sediment sampling air sampling and also um, asbestos sampling as i mentioned earlier and then cannabis is becoming a big market as well, especially in the United States and states that are legalizing cannabis. The states, when they legalize it, are requiring different types of um, quality control testing and sampling. So getting started is actually very simple. Um, it's a six-step process. Uh, we can walk you through that through uh, web meetings or we have an online tutorial. But the six steps are very simple to get through. Each step's about 30 to 40 minutes, plus or minus. The total uh, process will take you about three to four hours. So um, it's very intuitive, very simple to learn. It's a sign of a good software when um, you can basically almost teach yourself how to use it. We have um, an online tutorial, so you don't you can do the web meetings for the training, or we can you can just get online and start doing the training yourself. It's a series of videos. You can see the six steps are right, right here. Each step has various amounts of videos. Each video is about one to three minutes long. So it was about a total of 70 videos. So once you get through those 70 videos, again, I think the longest one is in the three minute range. Um, so uh, it's very quick to get through. Most of them are less than two minutes. Um, they teach you, you know, each step, each little thing that you need to know. Um, it's even a good for a reference in case you forget something or maybe you want a little refresher. Um, total of three to four hours. You could literally start training today and be uh, proficient enough to sampling using our software by tomorrow. So um, that's it.